Hello everybody. Well, this is the very last lecture of our course, uh, week 12, and uh, the second lecture of linear regression. And uh, in this lecture we're going to look at an example uh, to illustrate the whole process, including um, hypothesis testing and confidence intervals on, uh, on the two parameters beta naught and beta 1 of our line of best fit. So, as I mentioned, this is going to be an example. Uh, suppose we have collected some data on fertilizer quantity versus crop yield. And uh, I've shown the data on the right-hand side here. So, fertilizer uh, quantity I'm going to call X. And let's suppose it's uh, whatever the units are, 100, 200, up to 700 uh, units of fertilizer resulted in yields Y, uh, 40, 50, and so on and so forth, up to 80. Okay, so there's some variability here, but these uh, quantities are fixed. So the y's are really the random part of this, uh, this expression. Uh, as we mentioned the other day, oh, uh, here's a plot of uh, what we see here. Uh, we have one, two, three, uh, seven uh, observations, so n is seven, and I've just plotted them here. And you can see that there's some variability, but there seems to be a fairly strong trend uh, between uh, the, uh, oh, I forgot to label these, um, the f uh, fertilizer quantity and the uh, crop yield. Well, maybe I better label these things. So this is uh, fertilizer. And this is yield. Okay. Okay, so as we mentioned the other day, in order to do the regression, we need to compute five sums. And so all I've done here is I've taken, uh, let's see if we can squeeze it all in here. Yeah, I guess sort of. This is the X is the left column. So the sum of all these numbers here uh, is, um, is 2,800. And Y is the right-hand column. So the sum of all these numbers is 420. And the sum of these ones squared is a big number, 1,400,000. The sum of these things squared is a slightly less big number, but still pretty big, 26,350. And then the sum of the uh, cross products, uh, X times Y, is 184,500. So once I have these sums, everything else pretty well just is a matter of looking in the summary pages for the appropriate formula and sticking them into that uh, formula. For example, X bar is just 1 over N, N is 7, uh, times the sum of the XIs, which gives me 400. And y bar is one seventh of the sum of the y's, which gives me 60. Uh, SSXX is uh, equal to the sum of the xi squareds, so 1,400,000 minus 7 times my x bar squared, which is 400 squared, and that gives me 280,000. SSYY is the sum of the yi squareds, that's this 26,350 minus n times y bar squared, which is uh, 60 squared, and I get 1150. And SSXY is the sum of XIYIs, which is this 184,500, minus N times X bar, Y bar, coming from here, and I get 16,500. And that lead, leads directly to our uh, estimate of our regression. Beta 1 hat is SSXY divided by SSXX. SSXY was the 16,500, and SSXX is this 280,000. So I got the beta 1 hat, the slope is 0.0589. Uh, this looks like it's a fairly small slope, and one might think that it's not um, very significant. But we have to remember that we're multiplying this small number by large values in x. If we'd scaled this x to by dividing through by 100, uh, we, we would have multiplied this slope by 100. And we'd have 5.89 instead of uh, 0.0589. Uh, and then the beta one, uh, beta naught hat comes from uh, the expression y bar minus beta one hat times x bar, and the, as I mentioned before, this means that the line of best fit is passing through x bar y bar. And plug in the numbers, I get uh, beta naught hat is the intercept is 36.43, and so my line of best fit here, I'm going to call it y hat, is just beta naught hat plus beta one hat times x. So that's our line of best fit. 
Our next step is probably to compute the residuals. We have to take a look at them before we go on to talk about uh, variances and confidence intervals and stuff like that, uh, because we're assuming that the residuals are normally distributed with constant uh, variance. Uh, and so we can uh, ascertain that to some extent by uh, uh, plotting the residuals and just checking to see if they look vaguely normally distributed. So the residuals are defined by EI equals the difference between our observations, YI, um, and, and their predictions. And the prediction in this case is 36.43 plus 0 0.0589 times XI. Don't forget the I on the X's here. Okay, so that is our prediction. Take that away from our observation, gives us our uh, residual. So for example, E1, uh, the first observation, if we go up here, this is E1, uh, sorry, Y1. In minus its prediction is uh, 36.43 plus 0 0.0589, and the prediction point here is xi equals x1 equals 100. So this difference here gives me minus 2.33. The second point, the uh, observation was 50, minus its prediction at uh, x equals 200, gives me 1.79, and so on and so forth. I get these following seven um, um, re uh, residuals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and if I plot these, uh, I'm going to plot them against x. I didn't bother showing the uh, the values on the x-axis. They should look approximately normally distributed, and no obvious trend. And by obvious trend, I mean trend in the variance. But there should also be no particular trend in the um, in the uh, residuals themselves. That should have been taken out by the line of best fit. There's no particular trend. It's not immediately obvious that there's a trend in the variability either. Uh, it's hard to say whether this is normally distributed on the basis of just seven points, but it's not obviously not normal, let me put it that way. So it's probably all right to make those assumptions. Uh, <clears throat> now uh, let's look at some of the variability issues. Uh, the residual variance uh, is obtained as uh, uh, S squared. For that, I need SSE. Uh, and SSE is SSYY minus SSXY squared over SSXX. And I have all those uh, uh, um, quantities up here. I computed them up here. Uh, so I just plug in the numbers and I get SSSE, SSE is uh, 177.7. And then the uh, S squared is SSE divided by N minus 2. N in this case is 7, so N minus 2 is 5. SSE we just computed is 177.7. And that uh, gives me 35.54 for S squared. And if we want S itself, which is the standard deviation of my residuals, is 5.96. Uh, so the next step is to compute the co our coefficient of determination. How well does our line fit? Uh, we go back up here. Oh, I didn't show the line, but basically we're going to come up with a line here that looks something like this. Oops, that's not what I want to do. And the question is, how well does that fit the data? And so the R squared value is what we're going to come up with here. Is just um, SSYY minus SSEE -E, SS -E divided by SSYY. Or I could write this as 1 minus uh, SSE divided by SSYY. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Uh, I use the latter one, although that's not on the summary pages. This version is in the summary pages. You get the same number in any case. 1 minus 177.7 divided by 1150. And the R squared is 0.845. So that means the correlation coefficient is the square root of this, which is going to be about 0.9. <coughs> um, it's actually a little bit over 0.9. Uh, so this is basically a uh, you know, fairly good uh, agreement between my line of best fit and the, uh, and the data. Now I could start asking some questions about the uh, various co the two coefficients, uh, beta naught and beta one. Uh, let's let's first of all find out a 95% confidence interval on beta one. And beta one is the slope. So if this confidence interval includes zero, it means there could be no linear relationship between x and y. So let's take a look at that. Uh, we saw the other day and in the summary pages that the sample variance of beta one hat is S squared over SSXX, and we know all of these quantities, just plug in the numbers, 35.54 divided by uh, 280,000, 
and this gives me 1.26 times 10 to the minus 4, which means a standard deviation on beta 1 hat of 0 0.0113. Uh, we're coming, we're looking for a 95% confidence interval. This is going to be a two-sided confidence interval. So alpha is 0 0.05. We don't know the true standard deviation, so we're going to be using T. Uh, this is two-sided, so alpha by 2, and we have N minus 2 degrees of freedom. Um, remember, we lose 2 degrees of freedom because we are estimating both beta naught and beta 1. So I'm looking in my T tables for T of 0 0.025 with 5 degrees of freedom, and that comes out to be 2.571. And so I think I've got everything I need to know to compute the confidence interval. So LU is equal to uh, something plus or minus something times something. And now we just plug in the uh, bits and pieces into the various somethings. This one uh, is the estimate of whatever we're doing the confidence intervals on. So it's the estimate of beta 1, and that's beta 1 hat. This is T, uh, because we don't know the true standard deviation. Alpha by 2, because it's two-sided with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. We just computed that, 2.571. And this is the sta sample standard deviation of beta 1 hat, which we also just computed up here. So I know everything here. I just plug in the numbers, and I get a range, or um, a confidence interval, 95% confidence interval, from 0 0.0298 to 0 0.0880. This does not include 0, so there's a, there's, there's a significant linear dependence between x and y. And we can say, basically, we were 95% confidence that there is a, de a linear dependence between x and y. We can also do a test on, uh, let's do a test now on uh, whether the intercept is significant. Sometimes the, it's not clear whether that intercept could be zero, in which case we just have a relationship y is equal to beta 1x instead of having an intercept. So let's test to see if beta naught is significantly different than zero at a significance level of 0 0.05, i.e. is the intercept non-zero. And for this we need to know what the sta sample standard deviation of beta naught is, and let's look at the sample variance of beta naught. Uh, we have an equation for that uh, we developed in our last lecture, and it's also in the summary pages, is s squared 1 over n plus x bar squared over ssxx. We know all of these things, plug in s squared is 35.54, n is 7, so 1 7th plus 400 squared divided by 280,000, and that gives me 25.39. So the standard deviation of beta naught hat, a sample standard deviation of beta naught hat is 5.04. So our test here, we want to test to see if beta naught is significantly different than zero, so we put that into HA. So HA is that beta naught is not equal to zero, and H naught then is the equality where beta naught is equal to zero. This, we know, is a two-sided test, and we ba we're basically rejecting H0 of our test statistic. So this is our sentence. We reject H0 of our test statistic. Something equals something minus something over something is, and then the wording here comes from uh, our alternative uh, hypotheses. This says not equal to, so it's either too far to the left or too far to the left, uh, too, too far to the right. So the wording here is either less than minus T alpha by 2 N minus 2, or greater than plus t alpha by 2 n minus 2. Remember the sign here, anytime we see less here, this sign is negative. If we see greater, this sign is positive. This is a two-sided test, so we get alpha by 2, and in both cases, the number of degrees of freedom is n minus 2. We've already computed this uh, t, uh, t value up here somewhere, it is 2.571. So basically, we're going to reject H0 of our test statistic. Oh, I didn't discuss what's going on here. Uh, something minus something over something. Uh, this thing here is T because we don't know the true standard deviation. This is the estimate of whatever the uh, test is on. So it's a uh, test is on beta naught. So this est its estimate is beta naught hat. This is the mean according to the null of beta naught, and that's uh, zero. And this is the standard deviation, sample standard deviation of uh, whatever we put in here. We know all of these things. We get 36.43 divided by 5.04. That 5.04 comes from here. And that gives me 7.23. So basically, this, uh, our, our, beta, um, our beta naught hat is approximately seven standard deviations away from where it should be if the null is true. I say approximately because this is a T distribution. Its standard deviation is going to be bigger then one. Uh, so, but it's approximately, it's about, it's going to be about this. Uh, and then, and this is basically saying we're a long way from where the claim is uh, beta naught equals zero. 
Uh, in any case, we reject H0 if our test statistic T equals 7.23 is either less than minus 2.571 or greater than plus 2.571. Well, it's greater than this one. So we can, so we can uh, reject H0 and conclude with at least 95% 90 confidence that beta naught is not equal to zero. So the intercept is non-zero. Uh, we can compute a p-value, or at least try to. We're looking for the probability that we see a test statistic of this size in either direction, uh, because there's a two-sided test, um, if we were to repeat this. So it's the probability that a t-distributed random variable of 5 degrees of freedom is either less than minus 7.23 or greater than plus 7.23. Uh, the t-distribution is symmetric, so this is two times the probability that we're greater than 7.23, I see in my t tables that with five degrees of freedom, the maximum value that we have is t5 is greater than 6.87. It gives me a probability of 0 0.0005. So this number here is going to be a little bit less than 0 0.0005, I guess 0 0.004 or something like that. But in any case, it's less than two times 0 0.0005, which is uh, uh, less than 0 0.001. So the p value here is very small. And that means we have uh, very strong evidence in support of HA that the uh, beta naught is not equal to zero. We recall that we reject H naught any time that we choose alpha to be bigger than the p value. When the p value is so small, we're almost always going to be then rejecting H naught because we would al almost never choose an alpha value that's less than uh, 0 0.001. And that's basically it. Uh, the, uh, for the regression, the sorts of stuff that I'm in, interested in you knowing about a regression uh, is basically covered in this example and uh, in your tutorial you'll see some more examples of that. So that this concludes uh, the series of lectures for this course. Um, I hope you found it enjoyable and that you learned something. Uh, and uh, best wishes with your tests to come, and uh, have a nice break over December. And then we'll get started again in January. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody.